Hello, this is Marcus Giuliano from a Roman Time Bistro. It is, what's today's date, Jamie? The 31st of March. It's the 31st of March. 31st of March, the day before April Fool's Day. Uh, let's see. Yes, I do have a little tan going on here. Um, we went skiing yesterday, took the whole family skiing to Hunter Mountain. Had some incredible spring conditions. Uh, sunny, 57 degrees, and lots of snow still. Uh, really, really good day at Hunter Mountain. And I'll be back at Hunter Mountain on May 1st for the TAP New York Beer Festival doing a cooking demo that afternoon at 2.15. Uh, so I will be there. On my website, I'm going to have a, uh, I'm going to put a tab on that for upcoming events and my schedule where I'll be uh, speaking and doing cooking demos and things like that because I have a lot of people always asking uh, where I'm at, what I'm doing. Um, and so, uh, but in the meantime, I got my good dose of vitamin D yesterday. The whole family did. We all have... Uh, I'll have red faces, and uh, I opted uh, not to put the sunglasses on to avoid the raccoon eyes. And, uh, Jamie, what was that information you got today about vitamin D, about sunblock? Oh, now you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> um, let me open it up. So, the sun protects you from cancer was the name of the email, and it's Dr. Al Sears um, who wrote this. The best sunscreen doesn't cost a cent. So, it's basically saying don't use sunscreen. Yes, and there's all studies here as well. Um, now, I've been an advocate for years of not to use sunscreen um, because sunscreen does have chemicals in it, and uh, it does block the crucial vitamin D that you need from the sun, so you can maintain healthy, but I'm also not advocating to abuse the sun. There's a very specific um, regime you need to do for the first time that you're out in the sun, and I went a little overboard yesterday because I was out in the sun full all day. Um, but when it, when the weather breaks and it's sunny and you go out in the sun, you know, start with five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, and build your way up. It's irresponsible to go out for a couple hours and lay out there and bake yourself to this red crisp. That's irresponsible. So basically, they said, you know, we're made to live under the sun. We're made to live under the sun. I mean, we need the sun. Our ancestors lived in the sun. They worked outdoors right. all day. Sunscreen was developed by a company for corporate profits. Um, if you do the sun properly in 5, 10, 15 minute increments to start out and build your way up, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and the problem is when you go out there and get burnt, that's the problem. Um, so definitely do it. Uh, definitely uh, you want to uh, uh, respect the sun for that. But today's, um, today's video is not about the sun at all. It's about maple syrup. Because here in the Northeast, it is maple syrup season. And you can, anywhere you drive around the countryside here, you will see the... Um, the buckets tapped into the trees and the sap flowing. Uh, it is everywhere, especially on our, our trip yesterday, skiing, I mean, all over the place. Now, here at my restaurant, I specifically buy organic maple syrup. A lot of people say, well, I've heard this for years. What's the difference between organic maple syrup markets? They don't, they don't pesticide the woods. There's no, they're not spraying woods. And you're absolutely right. They're typically not uh, putting pesticides out in the woods because maple syrup is a wild harvested product. But here are some of the differences that organic maple syrup does, in fact, do that, that you might not realize. Because uh, you know, certain things you can realize, okay, this is organic and, and this is a conventional thing and here's the major differences. Well, these are, we're talking about just maple trees walking out in the forest and you know, tapping a maple tree and then taking the maple syrup, the sap, and then reducing it down to syrup. So one would say, there's really nothing, what, what could go wrong in that process? So when you get, when you use certified organic maple syrup, the maple syrup producer, the farm, um, the forager out there has to obey by certain rules. And these are the rules. They have to monitor if there's any apple or peach or any pear orchards or other types of orchards or agriculture in its area and determine a buffer zone. So you can't all of a sudden tap a maple, a maple tree that is sitting on the edge of an apple orchard that's being sprayed. They don't allow that. So that's where the pesticides would be coming from. So they have to have proper buffer zones from other agricultural farms. Uh, another thing is uh, the road. On my way up to Hunter Mountain, driving within three, four feet of the road, they're tapping trees. Well, the, the, uh, the roads here in the Northeast get salted uh, in the winter for ice and snow. And sometimes some other chemicals are put down. Here in the town that I live in, they use a salt brine or liquid solution that they'll actually spray on the roads that'll last for literally like two days. I'm not really sure what's in that, um, but one can only imagine. But as these these uh, maple syrup buckets are sitting on the side of the road, you're kicking up sand and dirt and any other kinds of, kinds of exhaust or, or the sand that's actually in there. And that could obviously get into your maple syrup. Also, if you are certified, your plant is inspected uh, much more than 
and non-organic um, to abide by sanitation rules are very, very important. Now, there's something called a defoaming agent. They have a defoaming agent in maple syrup. Because if you were to boil the sap, what would happen is um, it would boil over. So you need to add something to it. Now, in the organic world, they are adding organic canola, organic soybean, some kind of organic oil. You don't need much oil. You basically need one or two drops for like 30 gallons. Uh, it's an anti-foaming agent. I'm not sure what they're doing on the conventional side. Um, somebody told me a story today, one of the producers, that in the old times, you know, if it was a person making it at their house, they would put a couple drops of bacon fat in there as an anti-foaming agent. Now, I'm not sure what the big commercial guys do, um, but who knows, it could be adding some kind of chemical, it could just be something as simple as a non-organic oil. Um, however, most of that will get cooked out or is not actually left in it, but it's what they're adding to it. Um, uh, so, hope that kind of helps you understand the differences or the importance of using organic maple syrup and why we actually pay more for organic here versus uh, conventional. However, um, if you do consume maple syrup, maple syrup has a lot of good benefits. Um, the mineral content in the darker maple syrup seems to be at higher levels because the darker stuff, I guess, they tap into the tree later in the season. That's when it pulls more minerals out of the tree. Um, as I told about you in my video the other day, uh, Daniel Vitalis on findaspring.com and his whole website talks about the health benefits of maple sap straight from the tree and the enzymes and the minerals and everything. So the darker stuff supposedly has more. And the two minerals that are key in that are going to be manganese and zinc, which are good for, for your heart, good for cholesterol reduction, um, good for your immune system. So those are some really good important minerals. So the darker the maple syrup, the rule, the, the better it is. That's a general rule for that. So grade B as opposed to grade A. So here at my restaurant, we use a grade B dark organic maple syrup. And uh, we use so much of it here that we buy it in um, a bag in a box. So we're not uh, shipping these small containers and have these, all this other plastic around or, or uh, heavy shipping. So we take a box, a five-gallon box that gets refilled. And, and that's how we use it here because we use so much of it. And uh, we get it from the Northeast here. That's the nice thing about living in the Northeast. Maple syrup is going to be a local product here. But there is a big Canadian um, influence because of Canada produces it as well. And it's still too early to know uh, right now how the season is going to turn out because the trees are still tapping. We got a little bit of a late start this year because of the weather. And it's just, you know, what you want is you want hot temperatures during the day or warm temperatures during the day and cold at night so the tree can kind of stretch in and out and draw that sap. And, of course, it's way too early to know because um, it's still colder. They're calling for uh, five inches of snow tonight here where we live in the Hudson Valley. Um, it was 57 degrees yesterday. We were skiing uh, with barely any jackets on, Hunter. But uh, hope that helps you with your maple syrup um, questions and consumption. I love this stuff, and uh, we use it all the time here. I'm Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. You can find me at that web at that domain name, chefonamission.com. And uh, shoot me an email, leave a comment, and thanks for watching.